It is time for God's kingdom to come and you are called to be part of it. We're so glad you're joining us on Hope Today and I'm so glad that we are all back together again. I'm here with Tom and Amanda and we just have an incredible guest that's coming up. Tom, tell us about them. Uh, oh yes, Peter Diaruda from New York School of Urban Ministry is gonna be with us, NYSEM it's called. And uh, you know, I have to tell you, so, so many times uh, you struggle to think, how can I make a difference in the world? How can I do something? How can I see my family saved? How can I see my church explode with new Christians coming in? And Peter's gonna talk about that. He's ministered in a tough city, tough but open to the gospel in New York. And he's seen many people come to the Lord. He's gonna tell us about their ministry and about more than that, you know, maybe you won't go to New York, but you might go across the street and share the gospel with your neighbor. Peter's going to help you to do that. It's going to be great. You know, I did have the opportunity to actually go to NYSEM quite a few years ago, but it was a beautiful time to see how their ministry is impacting that city for the, the glory of God. And I just have to say one more thing. We went and visited our family, our son from the Air Force's home. And this first thing my dad said when we got to their house is, hey, come up here and look at this. And he had to show me that Cornerstone Television is on Roku and we are up and running, you know, great audio, great video. So kudos to whoever was working on that, but all we of were, our we Roku down. watchers For those are of you who maybe have happy. seen us on Roku, <laughs> including my wife, <laughs> uh, they, uh, we were down for a while, like three weeks or more. And uh, praise God, thanks to Steve and Lee and, and Michael and everyone who got us back up and running. Yeah. yeah, we are so glad for our Roku family. So maybe you're watching us on Roku or wherever you're watching us from in Pittsburgh, Alabama, Florida, California, all around the world. We love that you are part of our Cornerstone family. And, you know, speaking of our Cornerstone family, yesterday, Tom and I and a bunch of us from Cornerstone had the opportunity to celebrate one of our own, Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert and his wife, Tiffany Gilbert. They have a pregnancy center that's here in the city section of East Liberty called Voices for the Unborn in East Liberty. So it was just a beautiful event of just people coming together and really rallying behind them and you know it was Tom, it was just truly incredible. I think it's just a beautiful thing to see the body of Christ to come together. Amy and um, Pastor Bach, they were the MCs there. It was, it was like a whole, it was a whole family reunion. <laughs> I felt like that we were there. And, and just, Sydney, when they introduced that, that young woman with her baby yeah. that had been saved through the East Liberty, it's called East Liberty Woman's Care Center. And, uh, that, and they're one block down from Planned, Planned Parenthood. And, and God is doing amazing things through that. I'm so glad that they're a, a partner with us. Yeah, and we're so glad that when you support Cornerstone, that a portion we take all the time, the 10% is that we give to local ministries here in Pittsburgh, like the Pittsburgh Dream Center, the Pregnancy Center, and around the nation and the world. So your giving matters. Your giving is changing lives. And, you know, we are just so thankful for your partnership. All right, so now we need all of you to be praying for us because you know what time it is. Time for Stump the Host. Alrighty, righty here's the first one. Which prophet saw a valley of bones come alive? Ezekiel. Uh, the, the, the knee bone connected to the thigh bone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Ezekiel, Ezekiel, right? It's Ezekiel. Okay, Yay. all right. So that's Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. And guess what? I had just recently read that. So I was like, ha, ah, know that one. <laughs> uh, right, very good. All right, so here's the next one. Now, come on, play along with us here. The author of which letter addresses the letter to the chosen lady and her children. What? The author of which letter? Which, the author of which letter? Of which letter addresses the letter to the chosen lady and her children. Definitely New Testament. Yeah, but I'm drawing a blank on it. Is um, it, is it um, the, the, and her children? Oh, yeah. Jesus help on, us. Amanda. Revelation. <laughs> I don't know. I, no. Well, um, when I think of a lady and her children, I think of Eunice, Lois, and then Timothy. But I, yeah. that's I, that's. I think that's that's you it. You want to say Timothy? First Timothy. We Sec can try. That doesn't that, that did, doesn't did, sound did right Timothy to me. Write does first it? Timothy. No. Uh, Matter of fact, I'm just like maybe it's Old Testament. <laughs> I don't know right, which letter this here. is. Uh, Shoot so first. first. We're gonna say First Timothy. We're gonna go with Amanda's answer. First Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Second, Second John. John. Oh, well. 
Yikes. There's All a right. lot of Johns in there. You don't know which one it is. <laughs> Sorry, <Okay. y> <laughs> We need to go back and read second John. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, Who's the chosen lady in our children? <laughs> All right, here's our third question. Hopefully we can redeem ourselves somewhat. Okay, which book is this first found in? The Joy of the Lord is Your Strength. Okie dokie. Psalms? I'm going to go with Psalms. I think. I, it is Psalms. It's like, it's. The joy. Wait. wait. Come 8 on. 10. I think it's the, the joy, joy of the Lord, Lord is your strength. strength. Isn't yeah. it Zephaniah? Zechariah? I thought, Eight, it was, 10? I thought it was Psalms. I don't know. Okay, go Let's ahead. Let's go with Psalms. Now we are. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. we got yeah. Yeah. It's a Psalm. I had the wrong. Yeah, it's a Psalm. I had the wrong today. book, but I had the right <laughs> chapter and verse. It's in yeah, Psalms yeah, too. Ten. Wait a minute. Can we do some background strength? checking? Because I swear in Psalms it does say the joy of the Lord is your strength. And they probably quoted it from the book of Psalms. I'm serious. I want right. to do some back checking. We'll, we'll take it up with the league office <laughs> again. Okay. All right. Well, well uh, we're going to take a quick break and recover here. And then uh, we'll be back with uh, Reverend Peter DeRuda from New York School of Urban Ministry. We'll be right back. No matter your age or circumstances, God wants you to move forward. Join best-selling author and teacher Dr. David Jeremiah in a masterclass, revealing how to live fearlessly. You'll discover that it's never too late to find your purpose. Dr. David Jeremiah reveals powerful ways for people of any age to live a life that's meaningful. Inside Forward, you'll uncover strong Bible teaching coupled with incredible real-life stories and practical biblical insight. Learn how God wants to expand your dreams, give you divine direction, equip you with tools to overcome fear, and much more. Request your copy of this life-changing book when you support Cornerstone Television. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Find airtimes for Turning Point with Dr. David Jeremiah at ctvn.org. Donate and request his book, Forward. Thank you for your partnership with Cornerstone TV. Well, our next guest is an ordained minister in New York City where he has served as an urban missionary for the past 30 years with the New York School of Urban Ministry, NISM. You'll hear us refer to it as NISM. Reverend Peter DiRuda has been very instrumental in bringing vision and challenge to city churches and in mobilizing the body of Christ for urban ministry. He joins us now to share about his ministry and how he's witnessed lives transformed and to share how you too can make a difference by getting involved in an outreach. Peter, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you, Tom, good to be here. Thank you so much. Well, I, I just wanna hear, I've spent a lot of time in your, in your neighborhood uh, back in another lifetime doing ministry, but tell us about the New York School of Urban <laughs> Ministry. Well, um, again, thanks for allowing us to be here today. Um, uh, NICE, um, New York School of Urban Ministry was founded in 1984, about 40 years ago. Uh, with the whole purpose of raising up a new generation of what we call compassion commandos uh, to in, in influence and invade the city. You know, we have different ideas about the city. It's the hood, it's drugs, it's concrete, it's crime. Uh, but Paul the Apostle said in Corinthians, ye are my joy. And uh, that's where Jesus went to the city. Uh, in fact, it was so cosmopolitan where Jesus died. King of the Jews was written in three different languages. So he was born in a city, he lived in a city, he died in a city, and God's called us to invade the city and, and see people's lives transformed by the power of God. But it's scary. Come on now, it's scary. The first time I went to Brooklyn to do ministry, I was like, what am I doing here? You know, a little Come guy on. from Pennsylvania. Come on, Tom. But... What I found out is people are open once you, once you share. That tough New Yorker exterior right. kind of opens, That's doesn't right. it? That's right. Don't be a snowflake for Jesus, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, uh, Paul said in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have a seminary degree, Bible. God is just looking for someone to be available and open so that we can be used of God uh, as a conduit of his anointing, of his power. There are people in New York City. I'm not from New York. I was born in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. My wife and I came to the city 36 years ago. We heard God call. Actually, I was uh, doing evangelistic work, and I was in Times Square, and I just felt the Lord stirring in our hearts. And so we went out with a nice team, 
and I lifted up my, uh, you know, opened my Bible and just began to preach and 50 pigeons dropped scud missiles on my body. <laughs> that was the urban Holy Ghost telling me to come. But God gave me a verse from Isaiah 61. We know the Spirit of God is upon me, but in verse four it says, and they shall repair the waste places, the desolations of many generations. And it's the anointing of God flowing through us to be the hands, the feet, the heart of Jesus that we can in invade and reclaim the city for Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> so, so I'm just curious a little bit about your testimony and your story of how God really like launched you and called you into this. Well, um, uh, I was uh, traveling and doing ministry and I, I was, you know, God was using us, but I didn't want to see the saved saved and, and the blessed blessed. How can God take my life, which I'm not saying I'm any better than anybody else. I mean, when I was a kid, um, my parents went to the principal because they were going to keep me back from the third grade. And uh, they said, well, he's got learning disorders. That's why some people still believe I have learning disorders, but I pray for them, <laughs> pray for all sinners. And so they took me to Boston Children's Hospital. Bottom line, the clinical psychologist said, you've got a nice son, but, but he's got to be nothing. He, he's going to amount to nothing. He's zero, nothing. And uh, we heard about a church in Massachusetts and our whole family went down and gave our lives to Jesus Christ. And then God touched my mind and my life and graduated with honors, uh, went to college, went to Bible school, graduated from Elam Bible College, then Houghton College. Now I'm the president of this ministry that we're reaching and networking with over a hundred different pastors and churches in the hood. I mean, these are pastors in the inner city. And um, we're just so humbled that God would just use us as, a, as an empty vessel. And, and um, I would just say to people that are watching right now, um, God is speaking to you today. And you're wondering, well, how could God use my life? Well, look at all of us. We're sinners only saved by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Talk to us about the importance of when we go to approach someone or minister to them. This is something that I remember when we visited up at NISOM, but talk to our, our viewing audience about the importance of that first interaction. The, the, the key is, thank you, Amanda. The key, it was so great to have you at our campus. God blessed us with a 74,000 square foot hospital building. We're able to train um, somewhere between three and 4,000 people come through our ministry every year. We do block parties, street meetings, outreach. We have a food truck on the road now, commercial. Uh, it's all booked up and we, and we minister in the city via the local church. We are committed to pastors and churches. Um, for your question, just be real. Just be who God wired you and I to be. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. Just a, talking to people, how are you today? God bless you. Uh, we had some uh, ladies uh, years ago come from Mobile, Alabama, 50, of, 50 women, how about that, led by two men. God bless those men. <laughs> and uh, they came and, and they left on Thursday. They, they wanted to get to the city early to do shopping. You know, shopping, there's a shopping anointing. Did you know that in I the Bible? Know what I know. <laughs> and so they left at 5 a.m. in the morning and the next, uh, uh, they, they got stranded at Boston Logan Airport, Nor'easter, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, they got to our ministry three o'clock the next morning. We, we picked them up from JFK. We got them up for breakfast, had a training session with myself, and we sent them out to the Staten Island Ferry. And these 50 year old women, they were out of their comfort zone. You know, it snowed that night. So anybody south of the Mason Dixon line, rigor mortis is gonna start coming in, you know? <laughs> and these ladies came running back into our campus and they said, pastor, you gotta hear what God did. I said, what? Because their assignment was, minister to just normal commuters uh, on the Staten Island ferries from Battery Park back and forth to Staten Island. So they're on the back of the boat, they're listening to our training and they're just standing there and for 60 seconds, they just begin to pray just silently, Holy Spirit, lead me to the person you want us to talk to. And 60 seconds later, the Holy Spirit downloads and says to these girls, go minister to this young lady. Look like just one of, one of these young ladies here. 
and uh, these, these people from the south, and they say, you know, honey, it's cold on the outside, but it's warm on the inside. <laughs> and, and this was at 1030 in the morning in January on the Staten Island Ferry, snow, rain, sleet, everything freezing to death. And all of a sudden, this woman says, you don't understand what I'm facing. And they said, honey, what seems to be the problem? I'm on this boat. I'm pregnant with my boyfriend's baby. I don't know what to do. He wants me to get an abortion. I'm in total torment. And I got on this boat because I'm going to commit suicide. And after an hour and a half of just these ladies pouring in the love and the compassion of Jesus, she gave her life to Jesus. She says, I'm going to keep my baby and I'm going to get rid of that bum of a boyfriend. I mean, that's only <laughs> Jesus. That's right. And so these are stories that are replicated over and over. Would love for you to come to New York. But if you can't come to New York, you can pray. You can be the hands and feet and heart of Jesus. You could just give a cup of cold. Jesus, did Jesus say, give a cup of cold water in my name, acts of love and kindness. And even James says, he says, faith without works is that I will show you my faith by my works. Works can't save us, but when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, how can we not give back to God and let, him, let, let, let us demonstrate the love of Jesus to hurting people today? Yes, thank you. It's just so powerful what you're sharing, Peter, of just like those moments and what's just been happening over and over again in your ministry. And one thing, can you just even speak to some of the complexities and some of the interesting things when it comes to inner city ministry? Because I'm part of an urban ministry and there, it, is, it is different than some of the things that the realities that you're facing day to day that are really important and dire. Right, right. We, we just say getting a parking space in, in New York City is spiritual warfare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just getting out yeah. of a nice and parking yeah. lot. Spiritual warfare. Um, uh, you know, uh, to answer that question, we had an invitation from a church in the Bronx about 10 years ago. And um, they said, why don't you come and be part? I said, send us the invitation. I get the invitation, open it up, come to our 10 year celebration. And, and the, they said, the theme is, we are still here. Mm. And in this city, all the forces are against you. Property value is uh, over a million dollars. The, the, the city of New York, God bless them. They're always dreaming up some other code and this and that. You just have to understand God has called you and that's all that matters. You just leave the rest to Jesus and understand that in the city ministry, it's going to take not days, but years. And if you understand that at the get go, it takes the pressure off because yeah. we in the church, we, we want everything instantaneously. Now it's, it's got to happen. And we're, our, our ministry is uh, turning 40 years next year. And we just say, you know, we're just getting started. We're coming out of the wilderness, yeah. right? <laughs> so um, I think that we have to, as, as urban leaders, as urban workers, you just need to know, I say there's two calls you need. One call to the, to the city or to the nation God has called you to. And another call is to keep you every day. And that's personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, let me ask you about that. Uh, we've <clears throat> talked about some of the things that uh, people struggle with, fear or the pressure, feeling like it's all on them. And it's not, it's the Holy Spirit. But for someone who's watching, um, what, how should they approach the Great Commission? We've all been called. Mm -hmm. How do they start? Where do they do? Obviously, they can come and do, do some training with a place right. like NISM or go to NISM. But what else can they do right now, today, to touch a life? Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, what does Ezekiel 22:30 say? I sought for a man among them who would stand in the gap, who would build up the hedge that I would not destroy the land. And um, as we just began to ask the Lord God, how can we reach the community, the city of New York? And we began to pray, there's so many needs. It's, it's just beyond uh, comprehension. But you have to focus on just one thing. David said, one thing have I desired. So maybe it's homeless people. Maybe it's incarcerated people. Uh, maybe it's veterans that we're reaching out right now. Seven just got saved about a week ago. Now they want to get baptized. Uh, we, we in the church, you know, we say we're the child of God. We're not the tail, we're the head, we're the apples of, of God's eye. We got the Holy Ghost and everything. We go out in the streets we're like, oh, my God, you know, we're intimidated. 
So I think what we need to do is the word says uh, in Job, you know, start out small and just begin to ask the Holy Spirit, what is God speaking to you, burdening you? We have people that just start out with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, maybe blankets, maybe a hygiene kit, maybe fine. We have people that the, the church doesn't even have any money. A person in the church in the city felt the burden of God. They got their station wagon, their minivan. They're making food in their house, putting some stuff together. Just go to a, a person on the street and say, God bless you. Jesus loves you. Maybe give them a gospel track. Give them information about your church and your ministry. Not that you're looking for members, but you want to have that divine connection. Uh, another thing I want to get back to before we break, and that is um, when you're in this city, it seems like you're all alone and you need to partner with other ministries. Right. It doesn't matter the denomination. Can I get an amen here? Amen. It matters that we're in the foxholes. We're in the trenches. Mm -hmm. We're brothers and sisters, black, white, Hispanic, mm -hmm. all different denominations. And the focus is not on our brand, not on our ministry. Right. Let the, let the focus be on Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I, I, I'll get all the glory. Amen. And so that's our, our focus and that's what we do. And uh, my wife and I served here in Pittsburgh for about two years. And um, we were married. Tomorrow is our 42nd anniversary. We're married tomorrow in Pittsburgh. But we'd love to have, we have a lot of churches from the Pittsburgh area uh, and also Pennsylvania uh, come to our ministry for training. And our whole purpose at NISM is not just people come and, and minister in New York so they learn it at our school of ministry and they bring it back to their local church and their local community. That's, all, that's yeah. tremendous. Uh, you, give Jesus. us your website. Okay, it's nysum.org, nysum.org. We're happy to host you. And we'll have a link to, uh, to uh, NISM's uh, website on our website. Uh, Peter, we're going to keep you around for a little, a little time of ministry here, but thank you so Wonderful. much for sharing that story. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank Amen. you. Amen. We're going to go to the Word because we need the Word. And you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. <laughs> and that comes from Nehemiah 8.10, in case Amen. you all didn't get that either. <laughs> we were so close yet so far away. But we're going to go to the book of Luke right now. We want to look into chapter 5. We're going to start with verse 4 and just read through 11. We're going to skip a few though. It says, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Oh, that is full, and I want you to preach on it. We got just a little bit of time, but okay. give it to us. Well, uh, that's a favorite scripture of mine mm. and passage. And I title that, I have a message that I even shared yesterday, uh, launch out, let go, and let God. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Launch out, let go, and let God. And here is Peter. He's got, an, he's got a master's degree, a PhD in fishing, and the Lord comes to Peter. You know, I love about the Lord because in the early verses, it says that he, he saw that the fishermen were out of, the, out of their boats. They were washing their nets. We need to be washed with the blood of Jesus, amen? Mm -hmm. Washed of preconceived ideas. We, we, have, we have God in, in a box. And uh, so then the Lord steps into Simon Peter's boat and, and, and then he says, Peter, he says, could you thrust out a little? You know, God doesn't uh, call us to do, you know, great things and giants. Remember David? He didn't kill Goliath right away. He took down a lion and he took down a bear. It took, so God is in the way of processing, building our faith. And God's a gentleman and he understands our frailty. So could you, could you thrust out just a little bit? Would you just trust me? And maybe there's somebody here today wondering, what should I do? Just thrust out a little bit because it's not the, the, the focus is not your boat. 
the size of the boat. Well, Brother Peter, you know, my boat is all jacked up. It's messed up. It's not like a cruise <laughs> ship. Strange. Listen, cruise ships have parties, but boats catch fish. And that's, that's what right. God's called us to do. Amen. The church is not supposed to be a carnival. It's supposed to be a fishing Amen. vessel. Yes. And uh, so he says, okay, uh, Simon, could you launch out into the deep? And um, God wants us to go deeper in him. Uh, basically, he was saying, Simon, you're a little bit too shallow. You like the, the safe zone. I'm called you to the risk zone. And when you launch out into the deep, Jesus is in that boat. And I love Peter. He's so, he's so professional. You know, when the Lord says, launch out into the deep, well, master. He doesn't say Jesus. He doesn't say Lord. He gets a little spiritual. Well, master. And that's how we get. We try to sort of maybe negotiate this thing. And uh, he says, but, but nevertheless, at your word. Oh, at your word. We just need a fresh word. And this is a fresh word for you. God says, just let go. Let God do it. He says, we've toiled all night. There is so many. That's the ploy of the enemy for us, even in ministry, to toil, to try and this and that. People come to our campus, some pastors, and they say, the 74,000 square foot. How did you get that? And they say, the first thing some pastors say, what is your business plan? It's not even in the Bible, business <laughs> plan. You know what? I, I get on my hands and knees. I say, it's called neology, Amen. brother. Good. It's Amen. just Jesus. That's right. and, and when he did what God said to do, look what happened. A Holy Ghost witness and multitudes came in and they brought others on board. That's and right. the last verse says, and they forsook all and followed him. I don't know. I've just said afresh today, Lord, I'm just forsaking what Peter D'Aruda could do or Nisim could do. God, what do you want to do with my life? And that's where the miracle takes place. Ooh, that Amen. was like, that was beautiful. I it's could listen true. to you all day. Just you're, speak. You're too kind. No, <laughs> serious. I, I, I love it. And can you just say like the three things you said? Launch out. Launch out. Let go and let God. Launch out, let go, and let God. God, right. Wow, launch out, that's your call today, to let go and to let God. And as we are coming to a close on hope today, we just pray that you would take these words to heart, that you would surrender all today and give what's in your hand and give it to Jesus. Just give it to Jesus and watch how he's gonna multiply, watch what he's gonna do, because guess what, there's a whole broken world that is waiting on you to be a witness for Jesus. We love you. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. On tomorrow's Hope Today. Uplifting others with songs about faith, hope, and love. Cody Clark and Jared Moffat of acclaimed acoustic pop duo After Grace discuss their latest single and how it's meant to encourage others dealing with grief and loss. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.